Um, I didn't have much else to say about that. Notice he puts discretionary income and basic needs in quotes. Again, it's the usual utopian thing of like, oh, in my society, everything will be provided. Um, let me see here. Capitalist I, production. One, one thing, um, as we'd mentioned before, we talked about the discretionary income. Yeah. I think that's something we can also talk about. Discretionary, discretionary social income, discretionary social political income, yeah. where most of the people who just are dealing with day-to-day -day things, everyday life, trying to just make a living, trying to get uh, get along, worry about actual nature and things. Most people normally just deal with their day-to-day -day life. These things that are coming to these things, you look at the people who are mostly involved in this, people who have the extra time to go on and Twitter, just like most people don't have the extra time to go on online and play Call of Duty or play StarCraft and play these things, put hours into games and start worrying about, oh, this game doesn't have enough, like the targeting on this on this weapon isn't good enough. Oh, this 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 being in this game is is too powerful and you shouldn't be as powerful as these other powerful. You need to check the actual status of them and and make them more balanced and things like that. People who are dealing with just farming, for for example, need to make sure they, they muck their cattle, make sure like they plant things. Those people don't have the time to go and do those things. They don't have this discretionary income in that mental capital to actually spend the social political energy in it. But now you also have these people who have discretionary time, discretionary social political income somehow. I don't know. I don't know what, what would actually say because that's what we were talking about. We were talking about these people have too much time on their hands that they can go and start activism, like getting into activism on these fringe issues. If you're seriously spending your time to activize for a literal princess. <laughs> Like, like, what, what, what? How much free time on your hands do you have for you to go on and be like this person who married into the one of the most wealthy, white power, white privileged family in the world is somehow yeah. oppressed? For you to find that much time, that much discretionary mental income, mental time to actually spend your time on that, to me, is is part of what we were talking about before as well. It almost like that's where the whole concept of like mental labor and things come from. It's like. Oh, you know, you're using my mental labor to have me explain things. It's like the fact that you have all this free time that you can consider that exhausting. How much luxury is that in of itself? You know? Yeah. Uh. Yeah. And it's, it's like, like for us, it's to, I do understand that I am in a position where and that's part of why I decided to do this, because some yeah. of these things I'm like, oh, is it out there? For me to even think, is this out there? That's really puts me in a position where I have extra time to actually think about these things. And then also to be able to record these and do the things and put it out there. But yeah. that, that's part of the things. We understand we're also in a smaller group of people yeah. that not everybody has the time to read and have a conversation about these. But yeah. the fact that there's other people out there who actually have the time to do this, if you can have the time to to activate, to activize for the people, why don't you spend some of the time in looking at the things that are behind it? And that's one of the things that I see is very lacking because part of why I got into looking into this stuff was because I had enough time to be worried about the things people were telling me about society. So I was like, okay, if those things are really things about society, let me look into the actual data. Let me look into the actual background. And I found it to be lacking. And that's what I don't understand with the average people. Now, this is the average people. That's why I say I, they can't really believe this. They're just saying it because I know people with seeming levels where they would have the time where it's like they virtue signal about something like this and then they go watch sports i'm like yeah. if you really thought united states of america was a racist country wouldn't you be looking into the stats instead yeah. of worrying about stats of some sports game so you can worry on your fantasy football instead of worrying about what kim kardashian is wearing and doing all these things wouldn't you be actually looking at the actual police figures or the actual assault figures of things like this if you really believed like megan yeah. markle was somehow being people being racist against it why why do people say the, these things and then go and spend their time on rather frivolous things in in my estimation by the way in case anyone wonders i'm my chair isn't here yet so i'm sitting on my suitcase it's a little awkward so if you see me if you see me moving around it's nothing's wrong with me it's just kind of readjusting um but yeah what you said i thought of this guy uh recently who he he's friends with somebody i'm close with again won't mention names but like i used to have him as a friend on facebook and his comments were either just like childishly mocking people or agreeing with certain people you know obviously leftist and if I would challenge him on certain points, he would say things like, oh, I don't have time to study this stuff. I have a life or something. But then the thing is, he would come back to the comments and, I, and not only would he respond, but he would react to the comments. So it's like, dude, you're taking the time to read through these sections. You obviously care. But then when I ask you serious stuff, oh, I don't have time for that. It's like, do you really care? Or are you just looking to troll people that feel superior? I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah.
Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 a, that's a good thing. And yeah. to the people who don't want to engage people so much in conversations, you can take yeah. things like these conversations we have. There's other people out there with sources, and that's one of the great things to like. That's at least if you care enough yeah. about some of the people that bring these things up. And you want to think of engaging them instead of doing it directly. If you're not ready to do it directly and say, I personally, as an individual, think this, you can say, Hey, I was listening to this thing that Stephen and Siles were talking about. These two odd people online, they said this, or, Oh, look, look at this thing by James Lindsay. At least get out there and start sharing this information because, as I mentioned, the average person hasn't spent the time to look into the things. I was one of the people who was really freaked out about these things until I looked into the things and all of a sudden I was like, Wow, it's actually not that bad. It's been a lot worse in the past. A lot has been done to improve us to be here. Some of the things being done are taking us back to that past. There's this de-evolution of society coming in and things like that. We're actually regressing. That's why I call these people regressives. And the people who are regressing this are not doing it because they understand what's happening. In some cases, they're looking at stuff that is inspired by people like Marcuse, who was looking at a world from the 1960s. And in the 1960s, you wrote this in 69, the amount of information you had at that time was not necessarily accurate of what was actually going on. Yeah. You get very limited things of what was going on contemporarily. So some of the stuff he was really basing it on was from 10, 20, 50 years before that in those kind of things. So it took that long for that information to come together. As we mentioned with Darwin, he was on, the, on Galapagos Islands 200 years ago. But still today, how much of the actual information that Darwin found out there has actually spread around? So think about how much longer it took for information to spread around the world for actual accurate things. So now we live in a time where people are starting to try to organize and live in society based on an understanding or data information of society that was in the 70s and the 60s that was being limited about what was in there. So they're taking us back to a time that no longer exists. So this just a basic regression in that. So at least find these other people who have looked into these things even if it's finding the actual people who they supposedly ostensibly support, quote them, find people that have discussed that, and at least create some kind of, save some kind of location where you have some kind of data, some kind of information to share with these people, and that would be one way to open them up. And I think they will thank you for it, because some of these things, if they truly believe this, it's not a good world to be living in, but some of them don't really believe it, and they still say it, and I think them just saying it is perpetuating things that are lies, and that's not positive for just the ongoing human flourishing experiment that we have going on here in society. Thank you for listening. This has been a clip from an actual longer recording that I'll try to leave a link to on the screen or somewhere around here where you're listening to this. Presents. <laughs> Presents. Pendants. Pendants. Peasants. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay.